Hello everyone, and welcome to the first video of the lesson about the finite element analysis of beams. Uh, before starting this lesson, you might need to uh, review the mechanics of materials of thin beams. Uh, on the Academy of Knowledge website, you might find the link. You will find the link uh, that uh, uh, guides you to a lesson about the mechanics of material of thin beams, or what's widely known as Euler Bernoulli beams. In this video, we will uh, talk about the interpolation function that's used for finite element analysis of thin beams. Uh, uh, a thin beam can, uh, or a thin beam element, can be uh, presented again like the bar uh, by a one-dimensional element that connects two nodes. But for beams, we need to use two degrees of freedom per node, the uh, displacements uh, and the uh, slopes. Uh, uh, at each node, the beam may move in the vertical direction or in the transverse direction uh, and also it can rotate. The rotation for the thin beam is equivalent to the slope of the deflection. Uh, on the other side also you have uh, similar def uh, degrees of freedom, the, the deflection and the slope, so you end up with four degrees of freedom per element. Also, uh, at those two nodes, uh, each of them may have a concentrated force, lateral force, uh, and it may have a concentrated moment. Uh, I'm, I'm stressing on the idea of lateral because if I have any axial loading on this element, then it will act like a beam. Later we will see how we can combine the beam element and the bar element in a single element when we are talking about frames. But for now we are only uh, focusing or talking about uh, beams that carry lateral loads and moments. Now since we have four degrees of freedom, we will need a four-term polynomial, which is uh, a cubic polynomial to represent the deflection of the beam uh, or the deflection of the element between the two nodes. Uh, again, uh, like uh, before, we will present the, uh, the deflection function in a vector form with an H rho vector and an A column vector where A is the generalized coordinates or the unknown coefficients. Then we force this uh, polynomial to uh, uh, to uh, satisfy the boundary conditions. To do that, we will also need to get the derivative, which simply can be uh, uh, the differentiation of the polynomial, which actually is simply the derivative of the rho vector h multiplied by the same unknown coefficients. Now we satisfy this by, by putting x equals 0 in the deflection and the slope expressions on both uh, at x equals 0 and at x equals l. Notice again here that we are using 0 and l to represent the starting node and the final load, which is quite sufficient uh, for almost all uh, the finite element analysis problems. Uh, for very special problems, you might need to satisfy the physical coordinates x1 and x2, uh, but we will be talking about those problems uh, uh, when we come to them uh, right away. Uh, now we have get the system of equation with the transformation matrix, a 4 by 4 transformation matrix, which can be uh, um, inverted uh, to get the uh, coefficients in terms of the degrees of freedom. Uh, which gives us again the shape functions or the trial functions of the beam n of x and they will all be cubic functions as we should have expected by now. Uh, uh, these cubic functions have uh, a very nice phenomenon uh, or a very nice characteristic that uh, uh, they have uh, these shapes n1, n2, n3 and n4 uh, let's just recall that N1 is associated with the first degree of freedom, which is the de lateral deflection at the first node. 
N2 is associated with the slope at the first node, N3 is associated with the deflection at the second node, and N4 is associated with the slope at the second node. Let's see what's going on here. For N1, you can notice that it starts with a value of 0 and a slope of 0, while it ends with a slope of 0 and a value of 0 as well. So again here, it's zero for all the other degrees of freedom except for the lateral deflection, it's equal to one. While for N2, it starts with a value of zero and the slope of one, and ends with a value of zero and the slope of zero. Uh, remember, N2 is associated with the slope at the first node. Now you can expect what's going to happen with the third node, the third node will have a slope of 0 and a, a deflection or, uh, and a value of 0 at the first node, while it will have uh, a value of 1 and a slope of 0 at the second node. Sorry for the misplaced uh, circle here. It should be up here. Uh, at N4, uh, which is associated with the slope at the second node, you'll find that it starts with a slope of 0 and the value of 0 and ends up with a slope of 1 and the value of 1. Uh, why am I emphasizing this here? This is what we're going to be seeing every time we, def we uh, derive the um, uh, interpolation or the shape functions of any finite element. Uh, this is uh, quite important because uh, this is going to help us uh, to expand for higher order elements if we need to do that. We have to check uh, whatever functions we are using, we have to check that they satisfy these conditions. The, func uh, the function we are using should be equal to 1 at the corresponding degree of freedom and 0 at all the other degrees of freedom. Okay, uh, so in this uh, video, we uh, quickly overviewed how we can derive the, equation, uh, the interpolation functions. We got the four shape functions cubic, and we kind of had an idea about how they looked like, and we uh, discussed it and explained it. In the next video, we will see how we can use uh, these uh, interpolation functions to uh, um, derive the element equations. See you then.